Hey everybody, welcome back to our Liberty House. My name is Lucas and today we are building a potting bench. Every urban suburban gardener knows you need a potting bench somewhere to you know plant up your pots and do uh, garden chores. We've been using our outdoor kitchen table and it gets disgusting and messy and so we're finally building this potting bench. It's going to be about seven feet tall and five feet wide and it's going to be a great space to store things and do basic garden chores. The cut list and all the directions are going to be in the description down below. And if you're ready to get started, give us that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and let's build a potting bench. All right, guys, here in the garage, um, we're going to make all of our big cuts. And what I like to do is one, we draw out kind of what we're doing and then write out our cut list. So we've got this set up, kind of get organized. And what we're using today is just some <coughs> redwood two by fours is gonna be the main thing of the structure. Um, this redwood is naturally rot resistant. Uh, it's not gonna degrade, you know, in the winter months and, and you know, start rotting out. So this is what you wanna use. Um, is something that's naturally rot resistant for your outdoor uh, projects like redwood. And then just get organized before you do it. So I'm gonna create the back wall of this. Um, you'll see in the finished product and then we'll create the actual bench top. So let's do that. All right, so this is gonna be the back wall that we're gonna add like slats, kind of like our pergola here um, to, to create um, the height of it. And so what I'm doing is I took the um, 85 inch tall pieces and then one of our 60 inch wide. So the bench is gonna be five feet. And I've marked 35 inches using a tape measure here, 35 inches on each of these boards. And then I'm gonna start screwing it in. And this is gonna be the shelf for the countertop of the potting bench. Um, so 35 inches is, um, countertop height and so we'll just screw this in and then this will be the back we'll make the front wall which will be 35 inches and then we'll put the side braces on and we'll have basically the skeleton of our potting bench what kind of screws are you using um, we're using two and a half inch um, outdoor construction screws Why is it important to use outdoor construction screws? Uh, just so that they don't rot and you know deteriorate and, and rust out, basically. build the front of it and put the sides on. So I'm just going to lay this back here on the barbecue and then we'll do the other part. So we'll have to redo that one, um, power of editing. Uh, make sure you measure to the middle, so 30 inches, and then this board will go in the middle. And that's going to create, we're going to create a space to store our buckets. So this is going to be like the dividing area. Thank you. 
So we just moved it over to the concrete here. You've kind of seen us, we've been in the garage, we've been you know, on the DG and now on this concrete just to get a little bit more flat surface, uh, more level. So when we do put this thing together, it is square and level, but that's gonna be the nice thing. If you follow the cut list, this thing should come together completely square because we will measure everything out for you guys and show you where to make your cuts and where to put it all together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a screw in our cross brace and I've laid the front uh, portion of the potting bench down and we're gonna get this started. So we're gonna create an L. So I just like to start it a little bit and then make sure you're leveled up here with the rest of the structure. Starting with just one screw in a lot of these, it gives me a little bit of play. So I want a little bit of play to make sure everything's level. So we'll do this one, we'll do that one, and then Beth will help me um, screw it into this. And then, like I said, we'll have the skeleton or the frame built of this potting bench in, you know, 30 minutes, really. Pull this together. All right, so we have it straight up against the wall. And this cross brace, this 30 inch cross brace, is going to screw into um, this 60 inch cross brace. And that's going to where we're going to put our countertop. So don't go all the way back, or it'll kind of mess up your dimensions. So screw um, cross brace to cross brace. All right, so this is what I was talking about. Don't go all the way back. Just go cross brace to cross brace. All right, so what we did is we added the two more braces at 27 inches. That's gonna create, now this thing is really stable. And this is also gonna act um, as part of our shelving system for underneath to store buckets and different stuff. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting on the slatted back wall. Um, that's gonna match our pergola for our barbecue area. And what we're using is these uh, one by, they're like four and three quarters. Let's see exactly what they are. They're three and three quarters. So like they're one by four um, unfinished raw cut um, redwood. And in our area, we can only really find them at Lowe's. So check them out um, there. They come in 12 foot long sections. So I cut this one to 63 inches because that's our overall width. And we're going to start layering this up and that's going to give us a nice sturdy base before we put this thing into position and uh, kind of like dig it into where we're going to put it so we're going to do that and to match our pergola we i cut a one and three quarter inch spacer block to put in between all of these and that's just going to match so you can do whatever spacing you want uh, if you want them tighter or if you want them bigger but we just wanted it to match so we'll actually put this one up and then the countertop will dive into uh, underneath this that we're going to build later. So um, aesthetically speaking, you'd want, you don't want your back wall to be flush. You want this to die into the countertop. So we'll do that. I'll cut these up, get this all put together, and then we'll get it into place before we do um, the countertop and the shelving underneath. All right, so we're going to start from the top, so it's the same level all the way down, and then the gap at the bottom will be a little different. So, 
I've measured the middle, so it's 31 and a half of this to the middle of this. Flush up the top. All right, so you can see Bethel put some clips in there. We were struggling because it got like really top heavy and was starting to lean over. And that was just a rookie mistake, amateur mistake. Um, I only put in one screw back here. And then so it was like this whole thing was pivoting because there was only one screw. So it was like, you know, creating like a pin. So that's why I just put in another screw in the back and now it's a lot more stable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to where it's actually gonna go. We're gonna carry it over there um, and the ground isn't exactly level. So we'll just dig in the posts um, with a little post hole shovel until we get it level. And then uh, we'll be able to do the countertop and the uh, shelving underneath. So let's do that. Okay, this part's gonna look different for everybody. If you're already on flat ground, you won't have to worry about this, uh, but our yard slopes a little bit and uh, we had to dig it in. So you're just gonna wanna dig it back and forth until uh, it's level both uh, front and back and side to side. All right, so as you see underneath the potting bench here, we have two sides. We have a shelf and then we have a side with these dowel rods that we're gonna use to store our buckets. And that was something that was important to us because every backyard gardener needs five gallon buckets. And we wanted to be able to store these buckets like that. So what we did is we took three quarter inch dowels and set them in here with a seventh eighth inch auger bit. And the front one, you want to be a little bit higher than the back. So about a whole dowel rod is what we measured out. So three quarters of an inch. And then that allows the bucket to sit like so, rather than like this. So you can keep some like potting soil or whatever you want in here at an angle. So we got enough room for like two buckets and we can always, you know, stack multiple buckets in there together.
And then on the other side, what we did is we took the same one by four redwood that we used for the back and made a shelf here. And this is like where we can store extra pots or like if we want to throw a tote in there with, you know, some seedling mix, you know, when we start seeds and that kind of, so just like a nice shelf here. And we put, you'll see in the framing, uh, when Beth shows you the framing side of it, we used two by threes here, but we'll put in the cutlass two by fours and the same with the stuff on the outside. We just had some extra lumber that was all redwood. So we used it up, but just create a little frame here cut these to 27 inches and you have like a nice little shelf that could even fit more buckets. <laughs> You'll see when we do the countertop, we're gonna create uh, it to be like really tight, like nice looking gap for aesthetics and just to not like lose a bunch of soil down it when we are potting. But on the bottom, we did bigger gapping here. One, just to save material and two, so when it does rain, it'll drain out um, down below underneath here. All right, final steps here for the main structure of this potting bench is to do the countertop. And we took the same boards here, the one by four redwood, and we cut them to 63 inches. And um, it's eight boards across. And so now we're just gonna take um, some outdoor decking screws, screw them down. We added a brace in the middle here just to give us some more support. And that's really it. This thing is done once we screw this in. Um, we're probably going to add a shelf and maybe some other accessories, but this is a potting bench. This is going to be a great space to work um, and do different things in the garden. So let's screw these in and finish it up. Okay, right here we're just going to add a 24 inch support in the center, um, which will act as the supports for our countertop. You're just gonna screw it into the front and the back and then that will prevent the uh, top boards from sagging. All right, the next step is really just to dry fit your boards. And this is when you're gonna want to see what side looks the best and which boards fit the best together. This is rough cut lumber, so uh, it's not gonna be perfect. Some boards could be warped from sitting on the rack. So definitely take the time to change some boards around to get the proper fit and the proper look. And then really what you're gonna wanna do is start from the very front to make sure that that board is flush and then they should be tight moving all the way back and then you'll have um, your largest gap in the back but the rest of the board should be nice and flush and it should be easy to assemble.
All right, guys, it's a couple days later. We still haven't hung the shelf, um, but we're gonna do that today. And what we got is just some uh, four inch L brackets and gonna attach them with screws and then right up to here. It'll be a nice shelf to put various, you know, like little pots or different things. And then uh, we also got some other like J hooks that we're gonna put in various spaces to hang some of our garden tools like rakes and um, shovels and stuff like that. So let's do that. Just using, um, you know, these are half inch screws just because of this wood. So whatever, you know, obviously whatever thickness wood you're gonna use, uh, make sure your screws aren't too long. That's why we haven't hung this yet because I had to go get some. And it's just gonna be spaced out. really nothing fancy about this. It's just L brackets. Um, I'm sure there's maybe prettier ways to do this, but this is functional. All right, everybody, that's our potting bench. Um, you know, it took half a day to finish this thing up. It's sturdy, it's big, it's better than anything you're gonna get at a big box store that's probably gonna cost you three times as much and not last that long. Really appreciate your guys' time watching this. If you like this, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, keep following us for more. We'll throw some pictures on how we styled this up with some more accessories and kind of the finished product later on. It's time to eat, have a good day. So this is 30, right? Yeah. And then 30 minus 6 is 24. So it should be... No, that's wrong. Uh, no, minus 1 and a half. So it should be 27. Why is this not? So this one needs to go out to 27. You're not filming this, are you? Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> 